looking at the night sky. Who built a tomb for the sun god? The ancient Egyptians thought that their kings were the sun god, Re, who had come down to earth. They buried kings in huge tombs called pyramids, maybe because the pyramid shape pointed at the sky. Is it true Stonehenge was a primitive computer? No, but in the 1960s, an American scientist called Gerald Hawkins said it was. He thought Stonehenge was built to work out when eclipses would happen. Who built a stone circle for the sun? No one knows exactly why Stonehenge, a huge stone circle in the southwest England, was built by Druids over 4,000 years ago. Its doorway could have framed the sunrise on the longest day of each year. Who thought the sky was a goddess? The Egyptians thought the night sky was the arched body of a goddess called Nut. Today, we know that Nut's body marches the view of the Milky Way from ancient Egypt. Who first wrote about these stars? The Babylonians were the first to write down their finding from studying the stars around 5,000 years ago. They noticed that stars seem to form patterns which we call constellations. The Babylonian Empire was roughly where Iraq is today. Is it true the Babylonians were math wizards? Yes. At first, their findings about the night sky were based on looking and guessing. By around 500 BC, the Babylonians used sums to predict exactly when even such as eclipses would happen. How do we know about the first astronomers? The Babylonians didn't write on paper like we do. They wrote on clay tablets, so fragments have survived scientists called archaeologists dig in the ground for clues about ancient peoples such as the Babylonians. Do the ancient Babylonians saw the same night sky as we see? The Babylonians didn't see the same night sky as us. There were no twinkling satellites and the stars were in different places because our solar system had moved since then. Who thought the sun was as wide as a ruler? The Greek thinker Heraclitus thought that the sun was just 30 centimeters across and that a new one was made each morning. So even though the ancient Greeks were clever, they didn't get everything right. Who named groups of stars? In AD 150, the Greek astronomer Ptolemy wrote a book about the stars, describing 48 different constellations or star groups. He named the group after characters from Greek myths such as Perseus, the hero who rescued the princess Andromeda. We still use Ptolemy's names today. Is it true people once thought that the earth was flat? Yes. Even up to the 1500s, most people believed this. They thought that if you sail too far, you could fall off the edge. Why do stars make patterns? Constellations are the patterns that bright stars seem to make in the night sky, such as a cross, a letter W, or the shape of a person. The stars look close together, but that's just how we see them from Earth. Really, they are scattered through space and nowhere near each other. How the night sky is divided The night sky is divided into 88 different star patterns. Nearly 50 were first described 2000 years ago. What is the zodiac? For astronomers, zodiac includes the 12 constellations that the sun passes through during a year. We can't see the sun doing this though. The sun's light is so bright that we cannot see the constellations during the day. Which stars make a hunter? Orion is constellation named after the legendary Greek hunter. Lots of stars make up the shape. Regal is the brightest and makes one of the hunter's legs. The next brightest is Betelgeuse, which shines a reddish color. Is it true astrologers are specialist astronomers? No, 
the zodiac signs that astrologers use for horoscopes have the same names as the zodiac bands in astronomy. They don't match with the astronomical constellations though. How did sailors know where they were going? Out at sea, there are no landmarks. In the Middle Ages, sailors had special instruments that used the position of the sun and stars to tell them where they were. These included compasses, astrolabes and cross staffs. Who made the first astrolabes? The first astrolabes were made 1500 years ago. Indian and Arab astronomers used pocket-sized instruments called astrolabes in the AD 500s. Is it true astrolabes only worked at night? No, you could use the position of the sun instead of the stars when you were sailing during the day. You looked at its position compared to the horizon. How did an astrolabe work? An astrolabe had two discs, one with a star map and the other with measuring lines and a pointer. You compared them with the sun or a star and the horizon to work out your position. What is the pole star? The only star which doesn't appear to move is above the North Pole. Sailors to move tell where they were by looking at the pole star. It's lowest in the sky at the equator. Who made the first telescope? Hans Lippershey, a Dutchman who made spectacles, probably made the first telescope in 1608. He noticed that if he put two lenses at different ends of a tube and looked through them, objects seemed to be nearer and clearer. Is it true Newton saw a rainbow in his telescope? Yes. Isaac Newton noticed that the edges of objects seemed coloured when you looked through a telescope. That's how he began to work, that clear white light is made up of many different colours. How does a telescope work? The lens or a curved piece of glass at the front end of a telescope gathers light to make an image of an object that is far away. The lens at the back magnifies the image so it can be seen more clearly. Who put mirrors in a telescope? Isaac Newton was the first person to make a mirror or a reflecting telescope. He replaced the front lens with a dish-shaped mirror at the back. The mirror reflected the image onto a smaller mirror and then into the eye. How far the telescopes can magnify images? Telescopes magnify images so much that you can even make out Saturn's faint rings which are about 1.3 billion kilometers away. Is it true the church accepted that Galileo was right in the end? Yes, the church eventually agreed that the Earth and other planets travelled round the Sun. But they didn't do this until 1992, 350 years after Galileo's death. Who first used a telescope for astronomy? Galileo started making telescope in 1609, not long after Lippershey made his. Galileo was the first person to realize how useful a telescope would be for looking at the night sky. Because he could see more clearly, he made lots of important new finds such as discovering four of Jupiter's moons. Who explained the seasons by showing the earth? Copernicus explained the seasons by showing that the earth goes round the sun and also spins at the same time. Copernicus explained why some times of the year are warmer than others. Where do astronomers put their telescopes? Observatories are building where astronomers go to look at the sky. They house the most powerful telescope on earth. The telescope are usually kept in a room with a dome-shaped roof. Observatories have other instruments too, such as very precise clocks to help keep accurate time and records. Where is the best place to build an observatory? Where you will get the clearest view. Most are built away from city lights, mountains, 
tops are best of all because they poke above any clouds that might spoil the view is it true the greenwich observatory houses the most telescopes no the kit peak national observatory in arizona usa as the most optical telescope one of them the mayall telescope in 4 meters across do the ancient people have observatories yes the ancient babylonians used observatories they did their stargazing form step towers called ziggurats how can a telescope see through the roof it doesn't have to an observatory's domed roof is specially designed to slide open at night so that the picture through the telescope is not distorted by looking through a window the telescope can be pointed at any place in the sky how deep is space early astronomers thought that all the stars were the same distance from us forming a simple shell around the earth now we know that some stars are relatively close to us and others are trillions of kilometers away do the galaxies move galaxies move so quickly they have different colors the light waves from them change just as a fire engine siren sounds lower after it zooms past we use the color to measure the galaxy speed are there candles in space not really but we can see how far away a galaxy is by the brightness of a special type of star called a standard candle the further away from the galaxy the dimmer the candle how do you measure the distance to a star watch the tip of your finger as you move it towards your nose the closer it gets the more cross eyed you become astronomers can tell the distance to a star by measuring how cross eyed a pair of telescopes has to be to see it is it true we measure how far the stars are in kilometers no they are so far away that we use light years instead as light year is how far light travels in one year 9461 billion kilometers who made the first radio telescope radio telescope are like giant satellite dishes that pick up invisible radio waves and similar waves instead of light rays unlike light radio waves can travel through cloud so radio telescope can be built just about anywhere an american called groth robert made the first one in 1930 how long the telescope can be a telescope can be 8000 kilometers long the very long baseline array stretches across the usa it has 10 different dishes and produces the best quality radio image of space from earth yet which are the most powerful radio telescopes the ones that are made up of several different radio dishes such as the very large array in new mexico usa the vla has 27 dishes each 25 meters across scientists compare the findings from all 27 dishes to get super accurate results where is the biggest radio telescope The world's biggest single dish radio telescope was a built in Puerto Rico in the Caribbean about 40 years ago. It is 300 meters across. So it would take you more than 10 minutes to walk around the edge of it. Is it true only 10 astronomers are allowed to use the VLA? No. It is used by over 500 astronomers a year. Some study our near neighbors in the solar system. while others peer away beyond a galaxy to other in deep space what is a gravity telescope a gravity telescope uses laser beams to measure its own length as a gravity wave passes through earth from space it stretched the telescope by less than the width of an atom four huge gravity telescopes were built at the end of 1990s can we see black holes we can through a gravity telescope although light can't escape a black hole gravity can when a black hole swallows up a star for example there is a ripple of gravity through space 
gravity wave telescopes spot the ripples. How long is the biggest gravity wave telescope? The biggest gravity wave telescope is 4 kilometers long. No one knows yet what new things astronomers discover. What is the weirdest telescope? The Super Kamiokande Telescope near Tokyo is just a big tank full of very pure water, but a deep underground. Very sensitive cameras detect teeny weeny particles called neutrinos zooming through the earth by recording microscopic flashes of light in the water. Is it true neutrinos have a dark secret? Yes, scientists think that the universe is full of something heavy which they call dark matter. Neutrinos may be a part of it. Are there telescopes in space? Yes, the first one went up in the 1960s. Space is a perfect place for looking at the stars. The sky is always dark and cloudless, away from Earth's pollution and wobbly atmosphere. The stars shine steadily and brightly instead of twinkling as they do to us on Earth. Are there observatories in space? Yes, some observatories use powerful gamma rays which can penetrate all the gas and dust in the galaxy to show us what is happening in its center. The Compton Gamma Ray Observatory was launched into space by the shuttle. Which telescope is in orbit? The most famous is the Hubble Space Telescope which was carried into orbit by the Space Shuttle Discovery in 1990. It circles the Earth every 90 minutes, about 600 kilometers above us. It beams radio signals of information to astronomers on Earth. How does the Hubble run on? Hubble runs on sun power. Hubble's two paddles or solar panels. They gather energy from the sun and change it into electrical energy. This energy is used to focus the telescope and beam data home. Is it true telescope can look back in time? Yes, because of the time it takes X-rays to travel through space, Chandra can see Khasars as they were 10 billion years ago. What's better than a powerful telescope? Seeing for yourself in close-up but it's too dangerous and expensive to send astronomers deep into space. That is why space probes are such important tools. Space probes are fitted with cameras. They beam back close-up photos of faraway planets and comets. What is Chandra? Chandra is a billion times more powerful than the first X-ray telescope. If telescope keep improving at this rate, we will be able to see the farthest edges of the universe in 30 years time. Is it true a probe found a watery world? Yes, the Voyager 2 probe photographed what might be water on Jupiter's moon, Europa. If there is life out there, probes will probably find it first. Could we build very large arrays in space? Scientists are already testing a cluster of satellites that fly in perfect formation using laser beams. The same technology will be used to create a string of small satellite telescopes making one huge eye in space. Could we build an observatory on the moon? The dark side of the moon would be a perfect sight. Always pointing away from the earth, it is shielded from man-made x-rays. But building there would be very expensive.